Chomp. Hi everybody and welcome back to You Are Supreme Toys. Today we're going to be looking at our first action figure from Dawson Models, in particular, Yusuke Urameshi from Yu Yu Hakusho. Now, I have just recently become familiar with Dawson. They have been manufacturing action figures for a lot of the neglected franchises out there. For instance, they've been doing some Rurouni Kenshin, Bleach, Yu Yu Hakusho, Slam Dunk, Initial D, Zenki. <laughs> a lot of really older properties that just don't get the attention that, say, Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or One Piece get. Now, these are not officially licensed action figures, so they don't have that stamp of approval from the big publishers that own these properties. And because of that, they actually come in at a cheaper price point. They're not paying royalties. You can argue the morality and legality of that to your blue in the face, but the fact of the matter is, we're not really getting any Yu Yu Hakusho merchandise, except for the occasional statue or minifigure or whatever it might be. I have not seen Figwarts or Figma touch the franchise. So it's good to see somebody taking the risk and manufacturing products for these really fan-demanded properties. So we've got Yusuke here in his little box. It's a very bland, plain box. It's green, it's got Yu Yu on the back. It's got his name Yusuke here. But other than that, there's nothing on the box. So I have been eyeing these figures for quite some time. They've been out for a little while. I personally waited a little bit too long I was going to buy them from 5K Toys, but they went out of stock and I had to order them from AliExpress. I'm really excited to get it open, so let's go ahead and pop him out. Alright, there is quite a bit here with Yusuke, so let's go ahead and go over the accessories. First off, he comes with this nice little display stand. It is a decently sculpted wooden floor. It's got some really nice wood grain sculpting with a nice little wash finish over it to make it look like an actual school floor or something like that. It's got these little pegs here on the back so you can interlock them right here with other pieces of flooring from other characters. So you can have a nice big wide display he also comes with these two adjustable stands. They have three points of articulation. I guess for various poses, if you want him jumping in the air or kneeling down, you can have him with whatever height stand you want. He also comes with these two claws so that you can hold the figure in place. There is some flashing here around the edges of the claws, so you might want to trim that off before you try to use it. He comes with his little spirit gun effect, which looks pretty decent. I had thought there would be a little hole in the tip of it for his finger, but apparently there's a different way to use it. I'm going to have to figure that out. He comes with a nice little school bag. It's pretty simple. It's just painted little clip and buckles and the handle. Nothing spectacular. He comes with his little spirit animal. Can't remember its name right off the bat but it's just a simple little slug figure. It's painted okay. Besides this very stoic facial expression attached to him in the box, he comes with three alternate faces. He has his spirit gun face. He's got his little grimacing face. And then he has his look into the side kind of face. And all of these are painted very well. And the sculpt is pretty good. He's got a lot of hands. He has two closed fists attached to him in the package. He has two grasping hands. He has two grab em hands. He's got two clawy looking hands. He's got two gripping hands. And he has two pointing A spirit gun hands. So that's 12 hands, six pairs of hands. That's a lot of hands. So as far as accessories are concerned, this is definitely Figwarts, Figma level accessory count. I had stopped collecting Japanese action figures a while ago. I sold off my whole collection of Figma and Figwarts. I had quite a substantial collection. And I was hesitant to try to jump back in anything like that because the prices on them have just skyrocketed. But that's the thing about these third-party manufacturers. They can release 
these figures of a similar build and quality and articulation style at a much more affordable price range. For instance, these guys were typically going for about $40 a piece. I paid around that, I think, from AliExpress. Let's bring Yusuke in here because this face sculpt is fantastic. That hair sculpt is fantastic. I, I just love it. They got it just, just perfect, I think. I love the simple blue-gray highlight on the front of the hair. It just really fits that character's animation design. The paint on the face is just really good. There's not a lot of paint there. It's just the eyebrows and the eyes. And, of course, the little sideburn there above the ear. But it's done well. The one thing you will notice, different from those other companies, is he is fully clothed in soft goods. So his shirt and pants are cloth, which is very difficult to pull off in this scale. And just in case you're wondering what scale that is, Yusuke stands roughly six and a half inches tall. So this is a nice six inch scale action figure line. I'm typically not a fan of soft goods, but these figures just looked really good. The soft goods just look like they're done well. I mean, look at this. Look at the little buttons down the front of his shirt. So I don't know how the clothes are gonna affect articulation, I'm not even sure of the type of articulation that's involved in these guys, but I know it's pretty substantial. So I'm going to try to open this shirt. This is nifty. You can sort of see it through the shirt, but they could have did Velcro. They could have did little clasps. They could have did even a little zipper. They put little tiny magnets <laughs> underneath the cloth of the shirt. So there are two magnets on this side and two magnets on this side and it just folds shut and holds together and that's just brilliant that's a brilliant design and what I love is that right up under his shirt he has his traditional tank top it's just white tank top that looks pretty decent now the belt kinda looks a bit wonky here on the pants and I would be a little concerned about breaking that thin belt posing it or trying to pull the clothes off but the belt is actually looped through the buckle and wraps around the pants so if you wanted to take the pants off you would actually have to sort of loosen that belt up and the pants is velcroed here on the front I'm gonna see how well I can articulate him as is fully clothed in his green school uniform so he's got head articulation it does pretty good it's on a ball joint at the neck, and then the neck also is on its own little joint. So you can get a nice little range of motion with the head, looking from side to side or turning. I did notice this as I'm trying to pose the head. The hairpiece wants to kind of fall off. It is simply plugged into place. So keep that in mind. You'll have to probably hold it tight while moving the head. As far as the body's concerned, he has this amazing little ab crunch. It's really good. I would be cautious when doing it as the shirt is tucked under the pants. So as you move him around, you'll probably wiggle that shirt loose a little bit. It won't be as tight. So he has a chest bobble and then he's got a waist bobble. So there's two points of articulation at the chest and the stomach, which is amazing. The arms, he has a butterfly in this shoulder. So you can move the shoulder from front to back, as well as hinge it up, rotate it, spin it around, and then he's got an elbow. I think this is a double jointed elbow. So even with the shirt, it can move up pretty far past that 90 degree, and it does have a bicep cut as well. So even with the clothes on, he's got some pretty decent range of motion. And of course he has his hands are on a swivel and hinged ball joint so they hinge this way you'll have to orient that ball a particular way if you want his hands pointing a certain way and then it twists at both the wrist and the hand I don't like that popping noise it scares me every time it happens but I don't know maybe that's just the way the figure it is I'm not too particularly familiar with these figures or the quality but they feel like a really good quality plastic it doesn't feel like model plastic it feels like action figure plastic now as far as the legs are concerned let's see because these pants are a little bit funky looking. 
I don't know how the pants are going to react to him posing. Now, as far as splitting is concerned, you're not going to be able to go far because of the seam of the pants. It's pretty tight, but if you move one leg at a time, he can probably go up about that high, that far up, that far back. There is a thigh cut, a double jointed knee, which isn't hindered too bad. And of course he has a rocker ankle. I will point out this, the shoe is molded in black plastic and the paint of the foot is painted flesh color and that looks pretty ugly. That's probably the ugliest part of this figure so far. It is going to wrinkle, but you know, Yusuke wasn't exactly a tidy guy. He was getting in fights all the time, so his suit was probably regularly wrinkled up. If you want, you can have his little buddy sit on his head like in the anime. He has this little divot in the bottom of him, so he'll hold right there on his head. Let's see how his face flops off. Of course, you got to remove this top piece of hair, which just plugs into place. Then you just grab his ears. Oh. His back hair can come off too. So, <laughs> then you just pull the ears and you can pop his face off. It's an interesting construction method, but it works. Let's give him his spirit gun head. Oh, you could really do some uh, death scenes with this guy. Pop his hair back on. Yeah, looks good. Looks pretty good, I gotta say. I like how the shirt can sort of pop open if you want it to. It pops open easily too. Let's see how the hands swap off. The hands come off pretty good, pretty easy. There's this little tiny peg. Pop his little spirit gun hand on it, and that pops on very easily. Let's take this hand. Look at these little clasps on the wrist, too. It's amazing that they actually went through all the trouble. He has actual pockets. So if you wanted, you could shove his hand or a thumb inside that pocket. He doesn't really have any straight hands, so to speak. It's kind of difficult to actually slide his hands in there. The butterflies make it possible for him to actually grab his other arm with his hand. Let's see how these little claws work. They just hinge open. They close around the body of the figure. The small end goes into the back. Be cautious with these. These translucent plastics tend to be a little fragile. But these are sturdy. These are about as sturdy as any of the other kinds of figures of this type. So you could have him doing his spirit gun. Now as far as actually getting the spirit gun effect up in the air, I'm not exactly sure how they intended to do this. There's no way to peg this onto anything. I guess this is what this is for, but it's kind of a distracting thing to have to do. But you can sort of get it happening. I think that could have been done better. That stand is a bit wobbly, as it is. But he is very dynamic. You can get a lot of uh, nice poses out of him. He looks great. I gotta say, I really like this. I actually really like the soft goods clothes. Just because of how seamless they are, they managed to find a material that was thin enough that it looked good and could move well with the articulation of the figure. Here. Yeah. The school bag handle is a bit tight. Even if you get the gripping hand around the handle, it's not really going to let the fingers go up under it. So, eh, I probably wasn't going to use this anyway, but it is a nice accessory to have. I think he looks great. This guy's pretty fantastic. I will say the pegs on the stand are too tight. In fact, you can see where I've kind of stressed that porthole a little bit by trying to put the 
giant peg here in there. I can see this belt drying out and breaking over time. Let me just swap this face again. Put a different face on him. Get him in quite a variety of battle poses. His feet are a little bit loose and it makes it difficult for him to stand, but you can get him standing. Definitely would probably suggest using one of the included stands. Of course you can have a smaller one. Say so you, you can even have this like just holding him by the leg if you wanted to. This guy looks fantastic. He feels good in the hand. He does not feel cheap at all. And really, I, I just feel like I got my bang for my buck. You get plenty of accessories. He poses well. He looks just fine the way he is. Even with the minimal paint apps, the colors are just right. The skin tone is just right. Those facial expression options are wonderful. His accessories are hit and miss. It's hard for him to hold this bag. It's difficult to get this spirit gun effect actually useful in a pose without a stand of some type. Yu Yu Hakusho was a show I really enjoyed up to the end of the second season. I was not really a fan of the third and fourth season. There are a handful of characters that I would like to see if they get that far to do them. They definitely should do a Botan. And Botan has a number of different outfits that they could use. I'd like to see her in her traditional kimono and her street garb with the red jacket and red pants where she had a baseball bat. And then Genkai would be a good one to have. So anyway, this has been my first experience with Dawson models. I think I'm a fan. Like Figma and Figwarts, these actually have kind of collector friendly packaging so you can put all the parts in it in these little clamshells and close them back up and put them back in the box. This has been an unboxing and review of Yusuke Yurameshi from Yu Yu Hakusho from Dyson Model and I am UR Supreme Toys. Thank you so much for watching.